We will be taking you through some of the features of BIM Collaborate and BIM Collaborate Pro. I will be using one of my sample models and this is capturing details from Revit 2025. Highlighting the functionality within Docs is always the main focus. In order to use any of the other additional modules, you will have to have your folder structure and permissions set in order to give access to these additional tools. When sharing information between multiple disciplines, you are able to grant permissions against the folder structure in order to give access to shared spaces, such as the one below. So we have our live information within this space and we'll be using some of the tools in BIM Collaborate to share the information amongst the teams. Any of that information that is shared is copied over into our shared space. Within each folder, you will see a, a copy of their latest information. And this may vary from discipline. You might have one team sharing files uh, a bit quicker or a bit uh, more frequent. And you might have other disciplines that are sharing um, at a slower pace. Now, regardless in the way that they are sharing, you can always control how often you are relinking that information into your own environment. Now, in addition to the shared space, if I expand one folder from the work in progress area, you will see that there is a consumed folder. Each time that a package is shared from or copied into the shared space, there will be an extra step that will allow you to consume that information into your work in progress area. We're going to take a look at some of the functionality within the design collaboration module. I'm just going to click on that now. So at the very top, you will have access to these three dots and this will expand the swim lanes. The swim lanes are connected to the folder structure and they capture each time one of the teams shares a package of models or documents. Now you will start to see a symbol or different nodes across the timelines. And these represent different packages that may have been shared. For example, I've expanded this one. It had the number two next to it and that was just a cluster of nodes. So more than one node connected in similar time range. If I hover over the first one, I can see that this package was shared and it's given a title and it also has a timestamp. If I point at the architect uh, swim lane, I can see that this package has not been opened. And I know that because it is an empty color. It hasn't been filled. So by selecting this node, I can see that there is a package that has been shared within here. And I'm just going to review that information. So I am acting as the site team, exploring information that's been shared by the architect team. Now, firstly, you will be displayed with a 3D view if that one has been provided. But on the left-hand side, you can explore the different sets of information, the model and the documents. So this is the list here on the left hand side of what is inside the package. Now at the very top, you will have tools such as the uh, number of sets, the sheets, and then also the 3D view. So it's categorizing that information within there. So I'm just going to expand into the sets tab. And I can go ahead and click on this sheet here. Now you will see additional tools that are appearing on the right hand side. This would allow me to mark up the documents using any of the markup tools and start to highlight things that I would like my team to be aware of. Now all of these markups are available within the docs functionality. You can make markups private or share with the wider team by using the publish option. Now, in addition to the markups, you may want to use something such as the issues, and this would uh, generate an email 
for the specific team member that we assign this to. Now, taking a look at the issue card, it gives me a number of details that I can fill out and make my team aware of what I'm trying to communicate or capture. So this is all being done while reviewing the architect model. I have one last step. In the top right corner, you will see the option to consume. By consuming this information, we'll place a copy in that consumed folder of what I just displayed a minute ago. This gives you a controlled way of linking your information into your work in progress. I'm going to select consume and I'm going to show you in the docs environment what that looks like in my folder structure. So in the top left corner, I'm going to navigate back to my docs. And I'm just going to try that one more time. Let's see. Okay, so now we're in the files area. And I'm going to expand my work in progress. And I was looking at the site engineer team and I was consuming information from the architect. So I can see here that a designated folder has been created in my work in progress area and it's now listing the model that I was exploring. If I click on the file, I will expect to see the same views, which was the 3D view. And on the left hand side, I can toggle between that 2D view, which was the sheet. So within this space, I have uh, my Revit file and I can now link that into my work in progress area. You are uh, or will have additional functionality such as the compare feature. So as you're consuming information over time, you can use these tools to compare the changes that have been made, allowing you to streamline the process of working on areas that might need to be updated within your model or being aware of any potential clashes that may cause uh, issues such as rework or any time delays. By utilizing the functionality on the left hand side, you will have things such as a model browser, allowing you to explore the views that have been shared, whether that's in a sheet or in a 3D view. So again, this allows you to view or target the information that's relevant to your team on a quicker scale. Now, these are some of the functionalities that allow you to link information a lot quicker than receiving a file through an email or through uh, a, a link and then having to re-import that into your Revit space. Now, in addition to the work in progress area in the consume section, you will also have access to tools such as model coordination. This will allow you to view your models in a clashing section, and then run again any issues that you might want to assign to individuals to be able to resolve any clash coordination problems. So taking a look at my clash space in the top right corner, you can create or manage multiple coordination spaces. If I expand through my model section here on the left-hand side, I can see that I only have the um, structural, electrical, and architectural model at this time. However, you can add any additional files that you would like, and this section would be populated. In the background, it will automatically produce or update a clash matrix for you. By utilizing the clash matrix, you could then generate a report off of the issues that you are creating and view your information again in a coordinated section in a streamlined process. By using the model element selector on the bottom left hand side, I could then create an issue, assign that to a specific model element and then to the correct team. That will begin to capture a thumbnail and provide a lot more information when viewing this on a report. The more information that's input within these sections, such as details, due dates, will provide clearer insight uh, for 
across the team and anyone that may not be required uh, to use the clashing tools. For any metrics, this can all be exported and stored within your docs environment for the wider team to see. Utilizing tools such as the markups, the issues, and sharing information through the swim lanes will allow a more time precise workflow and allow you to access from anywhere that you have an internet connection. Using this docs environment is overall enhancing the workflow. If you are happy to save any uh, specific views, you can also use the uh, model browser in the left hand side to filter. And I will show you in one other section as well. You can save specific views to your docs environment. If I expand one of these, for example, I can see that uh, we have the structural and the electrical models that are saved together. So they've been linked, they've been saved for specific views, and they now have been saved to docs, or they can be saved to docs. You will see in the views tab by selecting save to docs, I can select the folder, and I did have one in here for my federated views, which was under my shared. And by saving this, again, you will be able to take advantage of things such as markups, issues, and even the version control. Collaborating in one section is going to provide overall uh, traceability and avoiding using multiple softwares to capture clash detection in one single space. If you have any questions about our videos, you can check out our YouTube channel where we have other tips and tricks and stay tuned to our additional blogs. Thank you.